Hi guys. So when we left off with Don Quixote, he had the um, puppet show and he destroyed all the puppets because he thought it was for real. And then um, he met the Duke and Duchess and they invited them to go to their house and they treated him like a real knight should be because they wanted to have some fun. And the priest there at dinner lost his mind and said, I'm never coming back until all these crazy people are gone. So today we have the adventure of the wooden horse. Everyone at the palace was having a grand time playing tricks on the knight and the squire. The duke and duchess played many themselves and they also encouraged their students to, sorry, servants to come up with ideas of their own. One fine afternoon, while Duke, Duchess, and guests were on the garden, twelve young ladies came in two lines. Following them was an older lady, and all thirteen had their faces covered by thick black veils. The older lady said they were looking for Don Quixote de la Mancha and Sancho Panza. Her voice was a little deep, but no one paid much attention to that. She said she had heard of the knight's courage and deeds. Both Sancho and Don Quixote stood up and identified themselves. She said she was Countess Trifaldi, governess of Princess Anatonomasia from the kingdom of Candaya. The very young princess fell in love with Don Clavijo and on her own agreed to be his wife. But Don Clavijo was only a knight and Princess Antonomasia was the heir to the throne. Then one day, giant Malabruno, a wizard, came riding a wooden horse and turned Antonomasia into a bronze monkey and Clavijo into a crocodile of an unknown metal. The giant note giant left a note saying they shall not return to their natural shapes until the brave knight from la mancha himself fights me countess trifaldi explained that she and the ladies who served in the palace had been punished too they all grew beards overnight they lifted their veils and showed don quixote was moved he could not see that these were not women but men dressed in women's clothing he promised to save them all countess trivaldi said that Malambruno would send a flying wooden horse to take the knight to fight with him. It was a horse made for two, a horse for knight and squire. The horse's name was Clavileño. His wood, reins were wooden pegs. He's very swift, your grace, she said. Sancho was unhappy about this trip. He wanted to stay with the Duchess where his master went to fight. But Don Quixote said he must go or the spell wouldn't be broken. Clavileño came on the shoulders of four big, monstrous-looking men, and one of the monsters said that both riders should be blindfolded and should remain blindfolded until the horse neighed. Don Quixote mounted willingly, Sancho less willingly. The master squeezed the wooden peg, and the veiled women started shouting their good wishes. God be with you! Look at that! Fast as an arrow! Sancho, hold tight! Don't fall! Master, Sancho asked, how can we be flying so high if we can still hear their voices? This is no ordinary adventure, Don Quixote answered. Don't pay attention to that. Don't be afraid, Sancho. Master, I feel so much air. It feels like bellows. Sancho was right. The pranksters were blowing air from the bellows to make the riders believe they were flying. But Don Quixote said they were arriving at the second region of space where hail and snow come from. After this, in the third region, there's fire, he predicted. After having fun for a while, the people decided to end the adventure. They set fire to Clavileño's tail. The horse was full of firecrackers. It flew into hundreds of pieces. Don Quixote and Sancho were thrown to the ground, half scorched or burned. Knight and Squire got up in pitiful shape. They were astonished to see themselves in the same garden they had left. So many people were lying on the ground, too. They were even more astonished when they saw this sign hanging from a lance. I wonder what it's going to say. The renowned Don Quixote de la Mancha ended the adventure of Countess Trifaldi on the first try. Malambruno is satisfied. The beards of the young women are gone. Don Clavico and Doña Antonomasia are returned from their previous shapes. The Duke and Duchess woke up as surprised as the others. The Duke read the sign too and with open arms went to embrace Don Quixote, the best knight of all times. Sancho asked about the trip. He said, oh, I saw many stars. Some looked little, like little bears, he said. The Duke and Duchess would have something to laugh about for a long time, and Sancho, something to remember and talk about all his life. Chapter 14. Don Quixote advises Sancho. It was time for Sancho to go to the island, and the Duke asked him to get ready. I don't have any special clothing, Sancho said. In any fashion, I'm the same old Sancho Fanza. True, said the Duke. 
Still, one should dress according to what one does. A soldier doesn't dress like a priest, and a lawyer doesn't dress like a soldier. The decision was that part of Sancho's wardrobe would be like that of a lawyer or judge, and part like a military uniform. But Sancho said there and then that he would not part with his own poor clothes. He would take them with him. Don Quixote asked for permission to be alone with Sancho. He wanted to talk to the new governor in private. Most of all, he wanted to give him advice for his new life. There are some words... These are some of the words of advice he gave. Sancho, my son, I thank heavens for your happiness, which you have found even before I found my reward. If you look at it carefully, it is just luck. I'm telling you this because I don't want you to think it is your worth alone. Sancho was paying strict attention. Don Quixote continued, First of all, my son, you should fear God. Fear of God is wisdom, and with wisdom you cannot make mistakes. Second, you should put your eyes upon yourself. That is, you should know yourself, which is the most difficult knowledge of all. If you know yourself, you don't put on airs. If you do put them on, it will only come out that you were a swineherd before. Be proud of what you are. You should never be ashamed of your family of farmers and laborers. No one will make fun of you if you are proud of yourself and your relatives. Look, Sancho, you should always do good and not envy anyone has more than you. Material things are acquired, and virtue is more valuable than material things. If a relative of yours comes to the island where your governor, treat him or her very well. If you bring your wife with you, teach her, because she's not educated. Help her to be polite. Manners are important for people in public life. A poor person's tears should make you feel pity, but a rich person complaining about the poor one is right. You should do justice. Always try to discover the truth through the promises and gift of a rich person as well as through the sobs of a poor one. When you must apply the law, do not impose all the weight of it on the convict. It is better to be compassionate than too stern. If you must pass sentence on a matter in which an enemy of yours is involved, forget you are not friends. Look only at the truth of the matter, and above all, Sancho, be devout and merciful. God likes mercy. If you follow these rules, you shall live a long life and become famous throughout the world. That's all I'm telling you about spiritual matters. Now let me give you advice about manners. The first thing you must remember is to be clean and clip your fingernails. Don't be sloppy. People who think you're disorganized if they see you unkempt or sloppy. Don't eat the garlic and onions, especially when you have to meet people. The smell will tell them you are not well-bred. Don't overeat. Health is tied to the stomach. Don't drink too much either. It's not very wise. Don't take too big a bite and don't belch in front of others or burp. Don't oversleep. Get up early and enjoy the day. Remember that hard work breeds good luck and laziness is opposite. And one more thing. Don't ever discuss family backgrounds or compare one with another. No one is better than anyone else. You only stand to make enemies when you make comparisons. That is all for now, Sancho. Later on, when there's need, I'll give you more advice. Sancho spoke at long last. Master, all the things you said are good, I guess, but... What good will they do me? I won't remember half of them. Give them to me written down. You know I don't know how to read, but I can give them to someone like the priest to read me. Help and help us. You can't read? Don Quixote exclaimed. This is wrong. A governor should know how to read and write. I am serious, Sancho. I want you to learn. Well, master, I know how to sign my name, Sancho said. Later, later. May the Almighty guide you in your governorship, Sancho, his master said. Let it say no more. If you are a bad governor, it will be your fault, but the shame will be mine. Sancho looked worried about those final words. Master, if your grace thinks I'm not qualified, I'm residing right here and now. If the devil is going to take me for being governor, I prefer to go to heaven being my own self, Sancho Panza. That's enough, Sancho, Don Quixote said. Do you make me very proud? You are capable of being a good governor, not of one, but of many islands. And we got to 16 today because it was short. Sancho, governor for life. Sancho left for the island, a gentleman on a fine horse. The duke's butler and a large group escorted him. Rucio the donkey walked behind him, adorned with ribbons and bows, and his owner turned back occasionally to look at him fondly. They soon arrived in a village of about 1,000 people. This was, Sancho was told, Marataria Island. The truth is, it was not an island at all. It was just one of those small towns and villages that used to be under a nobleman's protection. The nobleman, in this case, was the duke. Like many other towns and villages in the old day, this one was surrounded by walls as protection against enemies. 
The villagers had been told of Sancho's arrival, and everybody was there to greet him, and the church bells rang in celebration. There was a big Thanksgiving circus in the church service in the church, and at the end of it, Sancho was giving keys to the town in a most ridiculous ceremony. We hereby declare you, Honorable Sancho Panza, Governor for Life of Barataria Island, said a man who called himself an alderman. Long live our governor for life, the people cried. From the church he was taken to the courthouse. The next part of the ceremony called for the new governor to answer a few difficult questions. That's a way for people to know what kind of governor they have, the Duke's butler said. If he's smart, the people are happy. If he's stupid, they're sad. Several cases were brought before his honor. There were many quarrels among people who didn't get along well, sorry, with one another. And there was an interesting case, a dispute between a tailor and a farmer. And a tailor is someone who sews clothes. Your honor, the tailor said, this man brought me a piece of cloth for me to make a cape for him. Then he said he wanted two capes for the same piece of fabric. Then he said, make me three, then make me four, then make me five. I made his five capes. Now he comes to get them and he doesn't want to pay me. Is the tailor telling the truth? Sancho asked the farmer. Well, your honor, I did ask him to make a cape, and in the end I asked for five, said the farmer, but your honor, ask him to show you what he made. The capes are so little, they're useless. They're only for good for children to play with. The tailor showed the five capes, five tiny capes. Everyone wondered which man would win the case. Sancho thought for a minute and said, the whole dispute seems silly. One man didn't give all the information needed. He didn't give measurements. He didn't give sizes. The other one didn't even bother ask for information. My decision is the farmer loses his cloth and the tailor loses his work. The case is closed. The people were very surprised at their governor. They had not expected a man who would reason so well. But then Sancho had a lot of common sense. From the courthouse, Sancho and the official party went to the palace that was to become his residence. So he finally got his island to rule. We'll have to find out what happens next.